to open up their eyes. <laughs> A plus now, because you're the deal maker. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. This is wait, Jeremiah. Wait, wait, if you're in California, it's still morning. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. <laughs> good, good day. <laughs> good day to you. This is Jeremiah J. Man Manero with J. Man Speaks, and I am here with Jeffrey Scott Stanton. And we are here at the global corporate headquarters of Douglas Elliman Real Estate, which is my office. That's right. We're here on Madison Avenue, New York. Millionaire's New Row. New York. Millionaire's uh, Row. I'm very excited to be here. Thanks for having me, sir. Thanks for coming. Today we're talking about door knocking, um, prospecting. I think we should just make it prospecting. Prospecting in general. In general. Yeah. Opportunity knocks 2.0 because that could be knocking, that could be knocking, that could be knocking, that could be knocking. Right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I asked Jamin, what are we talking about? I'm like, oh, all right, listen, I'm just going to. I'm just going to play off of you, so I think we're just going to do it about, like, prospecting in general. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, especially if you're in New York State, you know that the state of emergency has been lifted. For all of those folks who were like, oh, I can't door knock because... I can't cold call. Because. I can't cold call because of the state of emergency, emergency. because I'm scared of cold calling anyways. Anyways, that right. was their excuse. Yeah. What is their excuse now? Because <laughs> I've had that from right. agents that is like... Oh, well, I can't. I can't cold call. I can't. I can't cold call. Call them up the day he's able to. I'm like, hey, you can cold call now. Um, Yeah, well. And I think part of it is, in prospect in general, is that fear of rejection. Right. Fear of rejection. Fear of failure, right? Fear so of failure. Like, and I think it's fear of even just, I don't even know if it's rejection or failure. It's almost fear of just putting yourself out there. It, it's that self-consciousness that, that like, oh, this feels weird. This feels awkward. But my opinion is this. If it feels weird and awkward to you, Door knocking, phone soliciting, you probably shouldn't be in sales in general. <laughs> like, it's like, a contact sport, like everybody. Working right? in re- like, working in retail, no, in retail, you still have to be in front of someone anyway. Right. I, I, don't, I don't know what other job you'd possibly do where you don't have to actually talk to people for a living. You could be a YouTuber. <laughs> but, but, listen, if you don't want you could be a YouTuber. You don't have to be a living. Right. No, but it's, it's, I think that's the truth. And no, it, yeah, 100%. I think a lot of it is agents don't know what to say. I and think. that and that's where somebody who might specialize in a little NLP. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know what NLP is, neuro linguistic programming, neuro your mind, linguistics your word, and how those words affect you. Um, in essence, it's the study of the subjective experience. So when J Man said do this, I said, hey, listen, you do your thing, and I'll just add the NLP in because there's certain words that go through easier into what we call an NLP. Your subconscious mind that get through quicker without a filter than saying, Hey, you think about selling your house? Cause we're all going to say no to that. It's like when you walk into a retail store, I can help you with something. Just looking. Just looking. Right. <laughs> you know, Cause it automatically puts up your guard. So as we're talking about this, what, um, what I'm going to do is really like throw the NLP stuff into what JMN says. Now, if you're interested in NLP, can I do a plug? Yeah, because you know me, shameless plug. Sh- hashtag shameless plug. <laughs> hashtag shameless plug. So um, we do, as part of Element, we have a uh, daily podcast that's on SoundCloud, iTunes, um, Spotify. So if you go there and you type in Element Daily Podcast, every Wednesday I do what's called Real Estate DE, or D, the D, Douglas Element, DE Constructed. And um, for the past, I don't know, probably 12 weeks, we've actually been doing half-hour podcast on learning NLP. So if NLP is something you're interested in learning in, Go on there, go back from the first NLP podcast, and I teach it like the basic way. Like not the psychology way, not the right. therapy way. Keeping it simple. We teach it simple for real estate and for business. So, Well, let's start with, um, what's up? Valerie says, what's up? Valerie. What's up? Oh, wait, hold on. Let's give her a... Yeah, right. had to bring in all the toys to I the office. I had to bring all the toys to the office. Well, and here's, you know, with anything that you do, whether we're talking about cold calling, prospecting, live streaming, video, like it's important that you enjoy it, yeah. right? And and I have found my greatest success when it comes to prospecting. It's like, as soon as I got past the fact that they're not saying no to me. No, they're not. How could they? <laughs> right? They're saying no to my product or service. Correct. Right? Correct. And this thing, who cares if they say no to you? Right. Someone will say yes eventually. Like, and that's what it is. Prospecting is just a numbers game. Now, you can do it better, you can get higher numbers, mm-hmm. a higher conversion rate if you say things the right way, but it really is just like literally if you knocked on a door or picked the phone and called people and said, hi, my name is Jeff Stanton, call from Douglas Elman, you're interested in selling your house. 
If you did that to 160 people, but that and that's the national average when you're calling, it's yeah. 160 to get one listing. If you did that, no skill whatsoever, and just made a you made 160 phone calls, you would get an appointment. You get a, you would get what winds up being is two appointments and one listing, and that's the lowest conversion rate possible. Right. Who cares if they say no? Right. You got to think of each person as a dollar sign. Right. Each, each no counts it towards the yes. Well, let's. I, I think it's important. Start with circle. Je you know, Jeffrey and I were talking about this before we started. Like, what are we going to talk about? This he asked me first. Let me say this. He asked me six times what we were going to talk about. Because he the changes week. his mind all the time. Oh, right. I'm like, what are you talking about? <coughs> kind of decided this a bunch of times. But um, so with circle prospecting, and we're going to, you know, if you have a listing or you just sold something, mm -hmm. it's the easiest way, and you can even do it with open houses. Uh, the easiest way to have a conversation because you're not necessarily knocking or calling and yep. saying. Hey, uh, do you know anybody that's buying or selling? You're just having a conversation in regards well, to something you're doing. And this is the thing. <clears throat> Any conversation, especially with door knocking, I learned this a long time ago from one of my coaches, is that I'm not going to door knock someone's house and unless I'm going to have a conversation with them. So that's right. my goal. My goal is I'm going to have a conversation with this person. Not, hey, do you want to sell? They're, like, What value am I bringing to that? So if I'm having a conversation, that's my goal. And honestly, if you look at it that way, especially door knocking or telephone calling, if your goal is just to have a conversation with the people, build rapport. It's, you're building rapport, and, and yeah. that's your goal on there. Yes, it's to get a lead, it's to get an appointment, but to me, always it was that have a conversation. That's my goal. If I can keep you on the phone for three minutes and have a conversation, I know I can get somewhere with it. Yeah, because I think ultimately that might be the mistake a lot of people make. They want to just go for the kill. Yeah. Immediately, like, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell? What do you want? And they're like, hang up the phone. But it's like, so if you can have a conversation, find ways to build rapport yeah. through, you know, ask a question and then sit there and listen to what they're saying. And, and that's and that's really the biggest thing is whoever controls, the person controlling the conversation isn't the person speaking. It's when the person the asking the questions. Right. That, that, that truly is. So when you approach, I think, the door knocking that way or telephone, I don't like call it cold calling. They'll call it telephone marketing. Yeah. I think if, if you have it that, that you ask the questions, you're going to be much more successful. And there's specific questions you can ask them. You know, if you're, we told like the circle dial, like, what do you do when you circle dial? You have a listing and you're calling them. Yeah, so I would do, I'll do it from a knocking perspective and maybe you okay. do it from, because I, I personally don't like phone calls because I know that somebody can hang up on me, I'll get a voicemail, mm -hmm. and it's much harder to say no to me face to face. Yep. And with a reason, if I just listed the house at 123 Anywhere Street, then it's simple for me to go around if I had brochures, postcards, whatever it is. You would make up even um, some agents I know to do the property business cards, yep. just a smaller version of a postcard. And just say, hey, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, how are you? My name's Jeremiah. Um, how long have you been in the neighborhood? Okay, we listed 123 Anywhere Street over here. Wouldn't you love to pick your neighbors? You know? And I'm going to pause there. I'm going to throw some NLP into yeah. that. <clears throat> so my thing would be knock on door. Mm -hmm. I am Jeff Stanton from Douglas Allen Real Estate. You may notice a for sale sign going up down the street because we just listed your neighbor's home. So that's how I would start that. You may see the for sale sign. Because I'm, that's actually the reason why I'm knocking because you right. may. Right. So that gives me this. I'm not here to sell you anything. Correct. Because you may see that. And then I would then I would continue. The other thing when I loved pro, uh, circle prospecting as far as knocking on doors is I always did a neighborhood open house. Like I did public Absolutely. open houses on the weekend, and on like a Wednesday night, I would do a neighbor, a neighbors only, and invite on either side, you know, ten houses on right, ten houses, probably twenty people over. And my purpose of door knocking was, and I had invitations made, not a flyer, invitation yes. made, yes, was too. knocking on it and say, "Hey, Mrs. Smith, my name is Jeff Sam with Douglas Elm Real Estate. You may see a for sale sign going up down the block because we just got that listing, and we're doing a, a neighborhood only, neighbors only open Very house. Very exclusive." Only for the neighbors, and oh then just hand them the neighbors. invitation. But it has to be a nice invitation, right? And that was another. Oh, really? And you get a couple things there. First of all, no one else is doing that. The second thing is they're thinking, well, when I sold my last house, nobody did that. Nobody did that for me. So automatically, right there, you're showing yourself a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into, hey, you know what? Come preview the property. We're having some wine and cheese, depending upon if your area allows those things. You know, and and you know, maybe you know somebody at work, somebody like that, that may be looking to move into the neighborhood. With the intention of, first of all, let's get them away from the public open houses so the neighbor's not eating up my time. Exactly. And then, ideally, what you want to do at that neighborhood-only open house is you want to have the flyers be a public open house for that next Sunday. So then you give them that because when they go to work the next day, they're like, hey, you like my neighborhood. There's an open house this weekend. And I like you enough to live Let's in my neighborhood. neighborhood. 
<laughs> and so again, that to me, it always is like, what's the end goal? What's what? What's your purpose in that phone call or that doorknob? Again, yeah. you can go the easy route and say, "Hey, you're just in a buying or selling." Okay, thanks. Click. Right. Again, a monkey could do that, and a monkey would get yeses, like literally. However, if you do it with make an it about the relationship, make it about the relationship. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I I like that. You know, so many times with agents in open houses, they're shying away from the nosy neighbor, and it's like. No. Why? These are people that you can meet. People know people. They're great opportunities for referrals and a great, great opportunity to choose your neighbors. Uh, and like, can, I, can I give you a little circle? Yeah. When you sell the property, you know what you do? When you sell the property and the buyers move in. I used to love doing this. I would get a big, literally two foot by two foot congratulations card. And I used to door knock. I used to door <laughs> like knock. publisher's clearhouse. Yeah, like it's big, huge. <laughs> I used to door knock on either no, side no. of the house that, yeah. pe that people just moved into and across the street and say, hey, you have a new, you saw we had the listing at 123 Main Street and we sold it in 10 days and you have a new neighbor moving in. So I just want to know if you want to sign Welcome to the Neighborhood card. Oh, that's fantastic. And by doing that, again, they're thinking, well, when I bought my house, nobody my did that. didn't do that for me. And it gives me a reason to knock on the door instead of saying, on, hey, you think you're selling because... Thank you. Are you thinking of selling? You know, I just went to the house and sold it. Now I'm using the reason of I'm knocking your door to, to get you to sign this card. Above and beyond. Because I had that listing, you saw we sold it in 10 days. So I'm dropping those little hints of, hey, look how great I am. Yeah. Without saying, look how You'll great never I am. believe what we got for that. But, anyways, would anyways, you like to, yeah, sign you like to oh, yeah. what'd you get for it? Yeah. What, what, how much did you get for it? Oh, wow. You know, buyers won't own pay now. Yeah, I can't Which is one it. of my favorite lines yeah. when you're talking to sellers these days. Is, wow, these buyers are just willing to overpay for homes. Yeah, can you believe what? Did you hear what they paid? But well, anyways, here, sign this welcome. And it's it's good. Like, no, what they pay? Takeaway take away clothes, clothes, right? Yeah. What what do they pay? What do they pay? Like here it is. Take it away. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, what? Let, let's get. We had an expired or fizzbill you want to do next? I said let's do fizzbill because I think that's more likely to happen in this market than. Okay. Than so yeah, actually, I have. I actually, Jamie is like, oh, I'll come up with some scripts. I said I have the scripts all in my head, so I actually wrote one down. So <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna talk a little linguistic here. So when I'm talking to someone, looking write this down. Talking to someone, you may want to write this down. When you're talking to someone, a seller, don't call it their home. It's their house. That's the first thing. Home is associated where people live. There's an emotional association to that. So you want to call it their house. With the for sale by owner, this is what I've always called linguistically. Knock, knock, ring, ring. Hey, Jeremiah, it's Jeff Stanton, Douglas Elman, Real Estate. Hello. I see you're selling your house for sale by owner. Yes. I'm just curious. How long are you going to try to do that yourself without professional representation? You know, I just want to save some money. Absolutely. So... Most people have a specific period of time that they'll try and sell their largest asset on their own. Have you ever thought about how long you're going to try to do this yourself before you use a professional like me? Well, I figured it'd sell right away. You guys how, just put a sign in the yard, right? You put a sign in your yard. Have you sold your home yet? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. So most people, when they try to sell their home themselves, and the key word here is try. try. Trying presupposes yeah. failure. So that's right. the key word. Most people, when they try to sell the house, they're really just trying to save money. Right. Is that what you're trying to do? I am, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, you, guys, you guys make a lot of money. So is it you're trying to save money or you want to make the most amount of money? Make the most? He gave me the pause. As soon yeah. as he gives me the pause, that's my opening. Because there's a difference. Now I'm thinking. Well, what do you mean? Oh my God. What do you mean? Are you trying to save money? Because if you're trying to save money, you should do this yourself. If you want to make the most amount of money, you should choose professional representation. Can I explain to you how I'm able to do that? Sure. And that's the key word there is yeah. try. Trying is trying. I, I knew he had me as soon as he said try. <laughs> I was like, yep, I'm done. Trying presupposes <laughs> failure. Yeah. And again, I'm not talking about your home. It's a house. It's your house it's or everything. your largest asset. Because when I switch it to your large, I'm, in NLP, I'm reframing this. Right. So when I talk about your largest asset, how long are you going to try to sell your largest asset yourself. So a couple things will happen. Most people will give you, well, I'm gonna try for a couple of weeks. Now you know, okay, fair. So you're gonna try for a couple of weeks, and if that doesn't work, then what are you gonna do? Oh, well, I don't know. Well, I would love to have a conversation about how we can work together in a couple of weeks. So they'll always give you the opening by actually doing that. Yeah. The key word there is try. And as in, it's not home, it's house or your largest asset. Like Yoda said, there is no try. It's there do no or try. do not. Do or do not. 
There is no, <laughs> there is no true <laughs> Brought Yoda into the, but it's, it, um, you know, when I first started in real estate, for sale by owners were my bread and butter. Yep. Uh, I didn't have much of a script except for, I would, <laughs> I've heard this before. I would go like this, grab the sign. If you did this in downstate New York, you'd yeah. get a beating. And bring it, bring it to the, to the house and be like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm here, right? And it was very similar to that. I'm like, well, you want to sell your house, don't you? Yeah. Well, you don't want to leave any money on the table, do you? Well, th this is exactly why I'm here today. Can I come in? And I, it, it. It's so much, like Jeff said, it's what you say, but it's also how you say oh, it. Oh, abs absolutely. Right? And this is the thing. If you, when you're, and this is people say like, oh, do you have scripts? I don't call them scripts. I call them dialogues. Because you can make a dialogue your own. A script is that someone wrote. To me, right. it's a dialogue. Right. So if you pause or you hesitation or you do that upswing. So linguistically, when someone says, hey, you're interested in selling your house? It's, you, you don't come across confident. Right. right. <clears throat> so in the how you say it, are you, are you interested in selling your house or are you interested in Selling your house. So in, in, in linguistically, an upswing is a house? question. <laughs> shows no confidence. The straight is a statement. House, you? Now, this is the thing. The lower is a command tone. You want to sell your house. And then what Jay did in here, Jay man did, what he didn't realize, is he also put a tie in or a tie down. Yep. You want to sell your house, don't you? Like, you want to make the most amount of money when you sell your house, don't you? Well, yeah. And you look at them kind of like they're stupid if you're faced. Like, you, you want to do that, don't you? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, of course. So you're going to try to sell your house, sell your home yourself, your house yourself, and, and to save some money instead of using your professional representation to make you most amount of money. Because you did say you wanted to sell for the most amount of money, don't you? Yeah. So he's just doing this. Yeah. So again, about mirroring it's, maybe a little bit it's, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's mirroring. He's mirroring me and I'm mirroring him. Maybe we're, we're matching and mirroring the same things, which builds, which builds rapport. Yeah. So a, a lot of it By the is, end, they're like a, like, a, you know, the, the old, uh. The dog, yeah. right? the heads, like you do, don't you? Just and, makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You make giving me a headache by doing that. <laughs> he was making me all anxious before we started because he was running around the room trying to set up mics and stuff. I'm like hey, we got to yeah. start in thirty seconds. Yeah, that's great. So that that's for, uh, for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. Now, when I talk to people about expires, they're like, "Well, in this market, nothing is expiring." I don't agree with that, right? And I wouldn't agree with it. Depends on price range, but also old expires. Properties that were on the market, and I was, you know, when we again, this is how I got through 2008 through 2011, mm -hmm. uh, when everybody was going, I can't get to get out of the business, and people were becoming door greeters at Walmart. I was door knocking all the listings that should have sold but didn't. Not expired. Cause expired. It's like, what does that even mean? And cheese so expires. How did you approach those expires? Uh, so I would knock, knock, knock. I'd say. Oh, hello. Oh, Dr. Stan, how are you? Yes, nice. So I saw your properties on the market back in 2016. Should have sold, but didn't. Now, what, why do you think that is? So I'm going to change his words. It's, I'm curious. This is the thing. It's using, using I'm curious or I'm wondering. Yeah. You'll see a person lean in. Because I'm curious, why do you believe it didn't? Because that I'm curious or I'm wondering why you believe it didn't. And what are they going to do? They're going to list 9,000 reasons. The market, the market my agent, agent, the marketing. marketing. <laughs> okay. You think you heard it a couple of times? You know, over and over again. Yeah. And this is what's great. Yeah. And when the person says that, and this is like, I always have I thought my phone was on fire because of the smoke. <laughs> We're in New York City. So those of you who don't know, oh the, the New York City, the, the manhole cover steam <laughs> in occasion. So Jay looked, looked out the window and saw steam by his phone and thought his phone was on fire. Okay. So it's I'll like always have like a piece of paper or a pad or something mm -hmm. like that I'm writing down. So what do you think? Okay, the market, yeah. What else? Really? Really? Anything else? And they'll tell you all the reasons yeah. why. And you know what they just gave you? They gave you all the things to tell them that you do or that you don't do. The agent didn't do enough for open Really? Well, you know what? We do an open house every single week. Oh, you do? We have an exclusive neighbors only open house. An exclusive neighbors only. Oh, no, with the white and cheese. Let me explain to you that strategy. <laughs> and this this is what I always love is, you know, what I'll tell someone is, hey, you know what? Do you mind if I explain the strategy to you? Like, would it be okay if I explain? Because not I explain my marketing. Because marketing is one thing. But right. if there's a strategy, it seems like there's some thought behind it. Maybe there's no thought behind it. You guys easily pull off a new podcast. I know a series called The Jeff and Jay Man Show. Hello, Mike. Yes, we should do a Jeff and Jay Man Show. Yeah, Jay and Jay Show. Welcome. Jay and Jay show. Welcome. Welcome to the Jay and Jay Show. 
They're so the union, baby. they're going to ask, like, when you ask them why the home didn't sell, they're going to give you 30 different reasons. Right. And most like they're not going to talk about that they didn't want to do open houses. They're not going to talk about that their house was smelly with dog yard and cat yard. Right. They're going to give you all the things that their <laughs> agent didn't do right. or that they didn't like that was being done. And then you explain to them exactly the same thing they told you that didn't get done. Well, let me explain to you my strategy of how we actually do this, how we actually can hold an open house and how we can do virtual open houses. And then you give them all the things to fill in those needs. The feel, felt, found? Absolutely. I know how you feel because others have felt the same way. And what they found was, I hope you all know the feel, felt, found. Yeah. Working with the Monero team at XYZ Realty. Wait, that's exactly why I'm here today. Can I come in? Wipe my feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit different in New York City because in New York City, you can't really door knock in buildings. But your phone, you, yeah. it's the same premise. But you're picking up the phone and doing it. Right. You know, it's the same premise. I love what agents say all the time. Well, I mail that neighborhood all the time. I mail that building all the time. I never get a listing from it. So what else have you done besides mail that building? Like that, those mailers and stuff should be part of your right. marketing plan. Should be a multiple. But are you calling them? Are you emailing them? You know, it's land, air, and sea. Like, how do we? That's what it is. It's exactly it. Land, air, and sea. Yeah. How do yeah. you? Yeah. It's it's you need to be able to hit them on multi prong. So pigeon come in. Coming Absolutely. Out. And then the best thing is for anyone, like if you're door knocking or you cold call them, is you go on Facebook and you retarget those people. Right. So now they're Create seeing your you kiss custom audience mm -hmm. and now you're seeing all these, they're seeing you every single day on Facebook. So now it's like, hey, look, I see this guy old place. This is the guy who knocked on my door. This is the guy who called me. That's a great point. Um, J Man's List of Predictor can do that. Let's not talk about that one. Shameless right plug. Okay. So. Back to our prospect. Yeah, but I mean, but using data in the analytics, you could Absolutely. also look at it, look at a neighborhood, and say, okay, I'm targeting this area. Let's see who's more likely to sell out of this area. And there's a number of different resources that you can do. Listen, work smarter that way. Even if even if you're not, if, even if you're not paying for a predictive index, even if you're not paying for the analytics, if if you live in like again, not New York City, not Manhattan, if you're driving around the area, you see people holding garage sales, mm -hmm. like. That's a perfect time to have a conversation. Buy some stupid tchotchke and have a conversation because people are having yard sales. What's a tchotchke for people outside of New York? Uh, some stupid little... Just a thing. Just a thing. A little, yeah. a little thing. Buy a mug. <laughs> Buy a mug. Wait, a they tchotchke. Don't, don't a tchotchke thing. outside of New York? <laughs> no. <laughs> Someone outside of New York, let me know if you know what tchotchke was. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't feel as bad as I should. <laughs> but again, that's that's prospecting. And that's the yeah. again, opportunity knocks. That's the opportunity. Right. The opportunity is when, if you're walking around the neighborhood that your, you know, your geographic farm is, when you see someone mowing a lawn, if it's the owner, is having a conversation with them. And again, don't make it all about real estate because it shouldn't be. It should be, you know, hey, how do I build this? How do I build rapport with the person first, right. then switch to real estate? Right. Well, why don't we talk about? I think that's a great way to kind of segue into the Ford method, maybe, or just ways to build family, rapport. occupation, recreation, dream. That's what it's family, yeah. occupation, recreation. Okay. Ford. Now I'm going to blow up everybody's shabby? How many of you know Ford? How many of you know that they say to build rapport, you should ask questions and then relate to the person based upon their family, their occupation, their recreation dream? So in the chat, wherever you are, if you learned how to build rapport that way, type in yes. So everyone types in yes. We'll wait. We'll wait. I'm, We're waiting I'm here. Done. We're gonna do um, a drum roll. Well, that, <laughs> that's, oh, that's how most people learn how to build rapport. That's how most people. Well, and and it's so funny because I I, I teach it all the time, but I, I went I was at the dentist the other day, just for a routine cleaning, and she's like, "So how's the family?" Like, first of all, why are you talking to me? I got my maha. Well, oh, that's the thing. Ain't that good? But she went family. Oh, how's work? I see you on Facebook. That, the, so okay. busy. So was, Ford was, works. Fam, yeah. And this is how you relate. Family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Ford works when me and J-Man already have a relationship. When I already know about your family, I know about your kids. Oh, when's the next time your kids are on a live stream? Because I think your kid on a live stream. Your son should do the live streams and shouldn't even be you anyway. I know. It's I hear just that all the time. So since, I, since we have a relationship, I can do based on Ford. But when you don't know the person yet, you can't say, oh, how's the family? You don't even know if I have a family. Yeah, like I'm an only child. And like those could be questions you ask, but this is the way it works on an NLP aspect is questions don't build rapport. Questions are there to draw out information. That's the only purpose of asking a question. Right. The question in and of itself doesn't build rapport. It's the matching and mirroring. For those of you who can't see is me and Jamie <laughs> are both legs crossed the same exact way. Let's see if you can see this. Legs crossed the same exact way. 
you know, just because that built rapport, we both moved back and forth at the same exact time. <laughs> now, I don't know if he's doing it to me or I'm doing it to it's him, probably, or who's leading or who's not leading. But if you notice, I just touched my go back and watch, go back in the replay. I touched my nose, and you'll notice yeah, two yeah, seconds later, he did it again. again. Yeah. But yeah. that's how you build rapport is by matching the mirror. And we could do a totally different thing on there. Yeah. But I mean, it's also your energy level. Right. If you knock on the door and the person's like, huh, hey, how's everything going? Yeah, and you're like, I'm like, hey, I'm getting it. Good afternoon. And they're like, sir, no, please leave. Yeah, it's I not. just called it's, the police. And that's the, the same button. thing on, on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same thing on the phone. When you're phone prospecting, like everybody says, oh, you need to be uptime. You need to have your energy. But if you're talking like this, and I'm like, hey, it's just in. It, this, right. It's going to break rapport instantly. They're going to be like, I don't like this person just based upon how they're acting on the phone. Yeah, if the person answers the phone and sounds like the sloth from the DMV, right? you need to slow down uh, yourself a little bit. Uh, uh. <laughs> you need to slow down yourself. Then again, if I'm calling J-Man, right? Because J-Man is hyper as could be. Yeah, I need to be hyper and uptime. It, well, and it's funny because when Jeff do, actually does calls me on the phone, our conversations are so great because it's like Jay, yeah, Jeff, boom, very boom, functional boom, conversations. Boom, yeah, yeah, see you, bye. I'm Getting like, done. that was great. Functional conversation. Fantastic. Functional conversation. But I, and, and that's what it comes back, bring it back down to the prospecting is, you know, when you call somebody up, are you that hyper person? Because the, the easiest way when you call somebody up says, hi, this is Jeff Stanton from Douglas Alman Real Estate. Wait to see how, and you should do that neutral. Like it shouldn't be up, it shouldn't be up, it shouldn't be down, it should be right. fairly neutral and see how there's, and they're like, what do you want? Respond back. Well, the reason why I'm calling is they're like, oh, I, yeah, how can I help you? Oh, well, the reason why I'm calling is because if I can go up when they're up, it's going to build rapport. If I can go down when they're down, it's going to build rapport. And there's a better chance of uh, being genuine to know people. R is recreation. R is recreation. So it's family, occupation, recreation, dream, dreams. Um, but like to me. And I know you don't like call, I know you don't like that telephone prospecting. That's not really your thing. I don't like the telephone in general. No, do you always video? I see do, 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 my phone. Do, 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 and my girlfriend's like, "What sound is that?" I'm like, "Why are you the messaging me?" I'm like, "Bro, I want to see your face." <laughs> the only one who's gonna do that is Jeremiah. So that's the only one who's doing that. <laughs> so, I, I, and and this is really what it comes down. That's just perfect point. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, that's how J Man prefers to communicate. So there's the thing, if I send J-Man a text, he doesn't want to respond to me right away unless he's texting me first. If I need to get J-Man in to ask him a question, I'll video you. Yeah. Because I know that's your preferred method of communication. And I'll be like, oh, and hello. Like, hello. What's up? Hello. So the thing. Good afternoon. Understand that person you're calling on the phone, that might not be the preferred method of communication. Right. The preferred method of communication may be face-to-face. -face, so that might be someone to door knock. The preferred method of communication. Well, just maybe meet them for coffee, right? They live in the city. That's absolutely. Great. Yeah. Whatever their preferred method of communication, their preferred method of communication might be uh, visual that they actually want something in the mail from you. And you're calling the person who's not interested is, I always tell people, follow up with that. Don't follow up with another phone call is, follow up if it's, if it's your geographic farm, either door knock it or follow up with something in the mail. Piece of mail. Because they may not be interested on the phone. The pre-crumpled uh, mailer. Pre-crumpled mailer? Never heard of that. No. <laughs> So what you do is you take what you you know you you handwrite it, but then make copies of it, and then you crumple it up, mm -hmm. and then flatten it back again, and say I pre-crumpled this for you. Just read it, <laughs> <laughs> just read it quickly, and then you could throw it in the trash. <laughs> so at least then you can get kind of like a that is great. Yeah, that, I think that's it. Well, the other thing is when, when you're when when you're sending something. So if I called you and you didn't give me like like you were okay with me, but like not interested. Yeah. Not if I'm gonna mail you something, you know. First of all, when you mail someone to some, someone, yes, you send out your postcards, but if you're putting in an envelope, make sure the envelope's hand dressed, or at least looks like it's hand dressed, because right. the response rate, the opening rate is considerably higher. The other thing is that if you're going to mail someone something, what I would do is called trashing your mail. I would take that postcard or that flyer and write something in, you know, hey, Mr. Smith thought this might interest you, just on the flyer, right? and then mail it, because then it gives that personal touch. You know, a lot of people, what they do is, is um, I saw a company was making pre-written post-its that looked like they were handwriting. said, thought you may find this of interest, Jeff. And what you're doing is taking the flyer, popping this on there, folding it up, and then sticking it in the mail. Because when they open it up and see that post-it, it looks like, this person sent this directly to me. Right. And again, it's just, it's just that way to communicate with the person. So what about um, building rapport with strangers? Like let's say let's because now we're gonna get out out and about and I guess we're getting Didn't beyond. Again, by the way, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna message Jamie. Yeah. 
So, <clears throat> but let's say we we're getting we're going to be out and about more. Mm -hmm. I think there's that penta. Oh, networking. Let's go meet some people. Chamber of Commerce, Rotary, okay. whatever kind of networking that you're involved with. Strangers, matching and mirroring. That's what you do when you approach someone. If they're listening, we all have a certain distance that we're comfortable with. Usually, when you approach someone you don't know, when you're looking at them, you need to be able to see their feet. If you don't see the tips of their toes, if I'm looking at you and we're both standing, with my peripheral looking, we're not looking down, but my peripheral, if I don't see your toes, you're I'm too, too close. close. I'm in intimate space. Oh, now. there's no way. There's nothing worse than a close talker. Right? But there's the thing. Understand that some uh, people are close. Met. Some people are close this. talkers. I'm not ready for this yet. Some people Six are. Feet. Six feet. Some That's people are close talkers that <laughs> if they stand, listen, when you initially approach someone, yeah. you're pro it is when you're door knocking. First of all, this is it. Make sure the person can open their door. Don't oh, yeah. stand and, so and, close and, to and, the door that your face is up against it. Look how look at the swing of the door. You need to be back at least that far. Yeah, I it's am, comfort zone. If if you're you didn't see the other opportunity knocks, I get into the science of that where i I will stand at least ten feet away from the door with my back to the door so that I can't see them going, No, 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 go away, go away. I don't want any. I won't even see that. I'll, I'll be like this. So I wouldn't put my back to the door because I think that's, I, I just wouldn't trust the person wouldn't throw boiling water at me. You just got to be ready. If so, you can throw boiling water 10 feet, then you should at me. least be back to the swing of the door. Yeah. At least be. So when you approach it and networking, you know, whatever, and you meet a person face to face, is make sure there's a distance. Now, if they approach you closer and you back up, you've now broken rapport. That's the first. So if they're a close talker, sorry, if they're a close talker and J-Man starts doing that, automatically breaks rapport. I don't like him. Automatically because of that. We were sitting on my lap, bro. So the I mean, first thing you asked me to. The first thing, <laughs> so the first thing is how you approach the person. Yeah. And then it is literally shake your hand because this is the thing. Shaking of the hand. When I put my hand up, no, it's not going to work. Oh, well, you did anyway. When you put your hand up, the person's hand automatically goes up. It's 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 an involuntary yeah. reflex. Yeah. It just it happens to be. And then it's matching and mirroring them. So if the person's were there with their arms crossed. Right. You actually they get wanted, there like I don't even know if I want to be here. My boss told me to come here. Yeah, and then I'm crossing my this. arms too. Yeah, because I'm matching mirroring him, not mimicking him. I'm matching and mirroring him. When I match and mirror him, he's gonna be this. This is comfortable. I don't need to have my guard up as much. What and, about the handshake? Let's let's talk about that. I feel like a lot of people didn't get any coaching on handshakes because I shake a lot of hands. Yeah, don't don't yeah. do the dead fish. Uh, <laughs> that's just disgusting. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's just yeah. just a firm handshake. And yeah. don't do three shakes and hold let on, go. Hold on, hold on. Don't do this. Don't do the elbow grab. The elbow grab is a power move. And unconsciously, people say, well, you do that because it shows you're in power. But unconsciously, it says to you, this person's trying to assert their power over Right. You. So it's don't do the elbow grab. And a lot of, you know, what about this one coming stuff. in high? Hey, I, no, no. It's you raise your hand and then you just do what they do. This is the thing. If the person. What Dead long, fish shakes you. What about long holders? Are they staring into your eyes, though? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. No, no. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? <laughs> anyway, so if the person, understand that if the person gives you like that fish handshake, yeah. you have to fish them back. But can you, re, can you reassert? No. There's been times where I'm like, oh, oh man, that wasn't, can we do it again? No, because no, that will make me feel weird. That would make, like, oh, oh, my handshake wasn't okay. good enough for you. Right. So if they fish handshake you, you fish handshake back. If they give you a firm grip, you give a firm grip back. Don't do the squeeze and let's see who's going to hold longer. Or, you know, I had someone that did me uh, once, went to go shake the hand and did the hand squeeze. I said, are you trying to show me you're stronger than me? Yeah. Oh, no, that's just the way I shake. And I'm like, yeah, that's, you that. Know. I broke my wrist at one point in my life. And I, I can remember yeah. the. I broke the shaft. Yeah, life. for me, it's uh, the scaffold bone, but it's. At that time, my my wrist was like super. It was still broken. And people coming like trying to do a squeeze contest. Well, I remember one guy who almost wanted to cry. I'm like, I would never call that salesperson again. <laughs> well, well, now it's appropriate when someone goes, "Hey, fist bump." Like, right. It's more. It's actually appropriate to yes. do that. Yes. Which so I think. I don't, like. Yeah. Yeah. Like I actually think that's See, easier. You, me? you guys saw that. I <laughs> I actually think that's easier than the handshake. Yeah. Because. It's it's and it's almost a way to build rapport now. Absolutely, right? How are we gonna do it? We're we yeah. doing this. We're doing this. I, I met someone. It's the other day for the first time, like two weeks ago, and they like shake. I'm like, All right? It's like the handshake. Do, do you want to? What are we I'm doing? Like, do you want to? It's like elbow. I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, oh, there we go. There you go. There you go. We did it. But again, 
like I wouldn't do it, knock on a person's door and then put it in my hand. They used to teach right. it back in the day. Knock on the door, look up the street, smile, and put out your hand. No, don't put right. your hand. There's a screen door between us, a screen glass door between us. But your hands absolutely didn't do nothing. Well, and, and I think part of that is everything you're talking about is associated with salespeople. Yes. Right? Don't go with your with your full suit and your briefcase and you're like, hello, nice to meet you. Here's my card. Yeah. Like all of that is automatically gives my alarms go off and say, salesperson, mm -hmm. salesperson, I'm automatically going to say Listen, no. unless you're in like an ultra high-end luxury, like we are, but unless you're in an ultra high-end luxury market, like to me, your company t-shirt, my element t-shirt, you know, if I'm wearing a polo shirt, element name tag, or, you know, realtor name tag, mm -hmm. whatever it happens to be. Because when you're dr when I knock on your door, you're not going to be in a suit and tie. Right. So it's going to be weird when you're in flip-flops and a t-shirt. I'm, I'm not saying dress like right. a slob. What I'm saying, not saying you do. Don't dress like you're going to a picnic, but don't dress like you're going to a church yeah. either. It's like, you That's can get away, saying. unless you're in an ultra-high luxury, you can do the, the, like, business casual. Polo shirt, like... To me, it's most people see me. I'm in a tie most of the times coming to the office. Like I'm not in a tie. This is more of a, of a dress down. But if I'm door knocking, I could take this off and I'm just in slacks and a, and a, and a white shirt, and that's fine. Yeah. And for me, usually it's like branded polo shirt. Yeah. Slacks. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have branded polo shirts, if you don't have branded T-shirts from your company, get them. Yeah. Like it, it's just. I'm sure you have. It's an investment. Oh, I have. I have tons, especially during the pandemic. <laughs> for those of you who see me on our Zoom, we run Zoom. We run Zoom training classes from 10 o'clock in the morning till five o'clock. And everybody's like, how many element t-shirts do you have when we're working from home? And yeah, I element, element pajamas, I element, element slippers, element, <laughs> element dog bowl, and I don't even have a dog. <laughs> uh, so I, how do we want to close it out? What, what do we want to leave them with? I don't know. Does anybody have any questions in there? I don't know if you can see the... Uh, I can see them, mostly. Here, we can give them a grinding on my life. All my life. they grinding all my life. That's it. Any more than that, we'll get copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, look at it. Yeah. Other cold calling most. Oh, cool. Christian certified in NLP. Yeah, I'm actually a, I have a, um, I went to school to be a teacher. I have a master in education. I have a doctorate in clinical hypnotherapy. And I'm a master practitioner and master trainer of NLP. Fortunately, I actually learned NLP from the founders and then continued it afterwards. But uh, a lot of the stuff we do, especially a lot of stuff I teach at Element, is the NLP-based stuff. And like I said, if, if you guys want to learn more about NLP, go to SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, um, search the Element or Douglas Element Daily Podcast, and you'll see Real Estate D-E-D -E Constructed with Jeff Stanton and Peter Hernandez, who's our president of our Western region. And um, go back to the original one we go through. I, they're only half hour long, and um, I believe it's – it's we did like awesome! seven or eight sessions on rapport building. I hope this sessions. was recorded. I jumped on. I can see that I missed something really good. Yes. It is. It is. It is. It's recorded. Be sure to tune in. Our weekly broadcast will be J-Man and Jeff's podcast. <laughs> J-Man. You could have a good talk. It would be. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny because before we, before we jumped on, me and him were just chatting. And I said this is one of the things I, I – like this is what we should be broadcasting. It's just me and him chatting because like that's what I find interesting, me and him BSing. I find that when I implement LP and build rapport, however, they like me but – still hard to get the listing. Okay. Just because they like you doesn't mean they're going to do business with you. If they like you, step. is a better chance of them actually doing business with you. The thing is, most people like with NLP, they learn rapport. And rapport is the first thing you learn in NLP. And then you learn all the really other cool stuff. Most people forget about the rapport building and do all the other stuff. Or they focus only on the rapport building and forget about the linguistics. Forget about you know things like saying, uh, Jamin says, well, I'm not interested in... You know, People always call me and say, hey, have you thought about selling? No, I'm not interested in selling. Well, I'm curious. Would you be interested in selling if someone was willing to overpay you for your house? Again, I'm curious. Would you be interested in selling if someone was willing mm -hmm. to overpay you for your house? And you'll see them pause and they'll think about it. That just said they're interested. So right. there's more to NLP than just the rapport building process. It's, it's, it's a lot more involved in there. The biggest words, like I said, is – and this is the other thing I'll, I'll leave on because I know we're, we want to go – Right about yeah, now, good. yeah, is there's a couple of words you should never use in sales in general. Power the line. biggest word is but. Like but is not a word you should use. I'd like to help you, but what that means is but negates everything you say before. It. So you want to use don't use the word but. You want to replace it with end. There's a couple other words I did a podcast on this where it's should have, could have, would have. I would have done that. Well, you didn't. So why are you bringing it up? Oh, you know, I don't listen to the other person did that. Well, I would have done that for you. Not I would have done that for you. No, that's what I do for my clients. Because would have means you didn't do it. Right. 
That's what I do for my clients like you. So my clients like you, some future patient that you're a client, clients like you, that's what I do for them. So there's a whole bunch of words, and the other word is try. The only time you use the word try is when you want the other person to fail. Like, you, I've never said, hey, Jamin, let's give that a try. Unless I know it's not going to go anywhere. Because trying presupposes now, failure. Now I know. Oh, yeah, I've said that to him before. <laughs> I shouldn't do these things with him. Then... Jamin, let's give that podcast <laughs> a try, <laughs> shall we? The good old trying try. Presupposes, trying presupposes, <laughs> trying uh, presupposes failure. Uh, so the recording will be hosted on, and we'll we'll send it to Jeff too. But this is also being See, recorded, and I'll spell my hand was on my chin. <laughs> See that? You saw it, all right? But uh, we'll post it somewhere, and we'll let you know where where that's going to be. You know what's the last thing we can cover? Just quickly, yeah. three five minutes or less. Three to five minutes or less. Mm -hmm. I have a buyer, okay, and a buyer. The buyer wants to look in a specific area, mm -hmm. specific building, specific part mm -hmm. of Manhattan. The I have a buyer script or conversation because that's different are you representing that buyer i'm representing the buyer exclusively i don't want to get the listing i want to write an okay. offer for the buyer on that <clears> there's list. two di there's two different ways so if you're i'm going to stick if you're not representing that buyer first okay because then i'm going to call i'm going to call you up our door knock and say mr smith i have a buyer that's looking in the area that may be willing to overpay for a home like yours so i was curious if you got a ridiculous offer would you be interested in selling your home oh yeah ridiculous okay. so what would that ridiculous number have to be Million five. Okay, have a hundred square foot. Would it be okay if I brought my buyer to see the property? Yes. Okay. So now the only thing in order for me to do that, I just need a one-time showing agreement that I'm able to show your property for that one time. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So then I'm gonna explain to them the one-party showing. If they're paying commission for me, if my buyer make, makes no difference, and then I'm gonna explain, you're not gonna pay me this unless my buyer buys the property. Well, I'm not paying you 6% or something. I'm right. not paying you right. a million cookies. All commissions is negotiable. So, there is no standard rate in any so state or any union. Do you agree? Yes. You're okay, right, great. but you don't pay me, but you're right, but, which I mean, but was intentional. You're right, but you don't pay me anything unless that buyer wants to overpay you for your home. Well, I'm not going to pay you that amount, Well, but you want the buyer to overpay that amount. So I need some motivation to have that buyer pay that amount. I guarantee if we don't come to an agreement, it won't cost you anything. Anything, absolutely. So now if I have that buyer, now the conversation is, is that buyer willing to overpay for the house? Because you have some buyers that I want to be in this property. I don't care what it's going to cost me. Then I'm going to door knock or I'm going to phone call and do the same exact thing. Smith, I have some buyers that are looking in the area that I'm representing, and they inform me they really want to live in a home like yours. And they're willing for to pay for the opportunity to do so. Right, I want to live in Tribeca. Yep, so they're willing to pay to be in this building. So I was curious if you ever thought about selling your house. Well, no, I didn't. So if you got a ridiculous offer for your home, not saying my bar is real, but if you got a ridiculous offer for your home, for your house, you wouldn't sell it? Well, it depends what the ridiculous offer is. That's your opening. Because before it was no, no, no. Well, it depends what that ridiculous depends, offer is. Right. Because what, what you consider ridiculous may be the same thing as me, or maybe it's totally different. They may not know the market and say, well, you know, I want $2 million. But I'm like, yeah, that's the value of the house. <laughs> okay. I was going to offer two five. I'll be it's right exactly. over. Hold well, that's and it's the whole I thing might wholesale thing. this property. The whole thing is that, again, is that I'm curious. Like, I'm curious. If you could, like if you did sell, what would that number be? We actually had a, a listing, and I have to be very careful. I say we have a listing in Aspen that the uh, agent, one of the managers in Aspen, went to the person. I'm not selling, I'm not selling, I'm not selling. And he said to listen, what's the ridiculous number? What's the read? And the, and the person threw out the number out there, got the listing. Buyer came in and offered them about twelve million dollars more than that number. <laughs> just because the company might have been twelve, might have done ten million dollars. Oh, I mean, but, yeah, what's ten? But this 12? thing, he just asked, "What's the ridiculous what's number? Numbers? Like, what's the dream number? What's the ridiculous number?" Yeah. And just happens to be this buyer wanted this property in Snowmass Aspen and was willing to overpay for it. So that's the reason you got to ask. Now they may give you ridiculous numbers. Like, oh, I want five million. We know the property's only worth. Okay, thank you, and you're done. But asking them if somebody's willing to overpay, would you be interested in selling? Right. If you get a pause there, that means they'd probably be interested in selling. Yeah, and then it may be running through like this is exactly what the buyer was looking for, mm -hmm. and your property meets their needs exclusively. Yep. Right. But you can say, no, we're not prospecting everybody. You were one of the yeah, chosen absolutely. few. The chosen. Few. The buyer drove by your yeah. house and loved it. Walked in the call you. Right. And what's that one commercial where the people are like, yeah, we're buying your house. <laughs> Let's do this market. You guys got to move out. All right, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, everybody.
Oh, yeah, I'll give you a I'm still going. Hold on. Wait. Oh, wait. I know what you want. Oh, that's it. That rings if, the bell for the end. If we do a podcast, you can't ever use that tone. I will use it. Every oh, I'm gonna bring my own stream deck and use my own. We'll, ba- we'll battle with I'm the stream wall, deck. I'm gonna do wah wah wah. Here, <laughs> wait. I heard Jeff walking down the hallway. <laughs> okay, right. I'm gonna disconnect the live feed right now. So right, I had a good time. Yeah. So did I. I. Found some value in it. Uh, and maybe we'll do this again. This is Jeremiah J. Manero. Jeffrey Scott Stanton. Make it a great day. <laughs>